I have done a few challenges on this channel playing the piano by ear, and that's because it's a pretty valuable and a pretty cool skill. So in this video, I'm going to try and work out the 10 most iconic songs by ear in just 30 minutes. Now, these are the most iconic songs according to Free Your Music, so let's get into it. Okay, at number 10, we have Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. So the first thing that I'm going to try and do is get the guitar riff learned because obviously that's one of the key features of the song. Fortunately, I have played this guitar riff quite a few times on the guitar and I know that the riff is quite repetitive. It's just a pattern that repeats and the only thing that changes is the first note of each repeat. So after I have the guitar riff learned, then it's a case of just working out the chords. And once again, fortunately with this song, it uses quite simple chords. For both the verse and the chorus of the song, it only uses three chords in each section. But then it's just a question of what I actually do with those chords. How can I make the song more interesting to listen to on the piano? Because although the important thing is to get the guitar riff, the melody and the chords, it would sound very boring if I was to just play the chords once. So I've got to try and find ways of making it sound more interesting. Okay, I've got a basic outline. It's in either D flat major or C sharp major, and it's based around three chords for the most part, which is C sharp major, B major, and F sharp major. And then in the chorus section, it's G sharp major, B major, and then back to C sharp major. So let's have a go. Okay, next up we have God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols. Now, God Save the Queen is from a genre that I wouldn't normally listen to, but I know with punk and rock and those kind of genres, they tend to use something called power chords. And this is because this is quite a simple way of playing any chord on a guitar, and it's just three notes. So on a piano, I can replicate power chords by playing the same shape that you would play on a guitar. But also, with this kind of song, it's written by a group of people who are trying to go against the system. So the music can be slightly unpredictable. But it's definitely interesting to try and learn a song like this that I've never really fully listened to on the piano. Okay, this one's a bit odd because there's not really any melody. He's just sort of shouting the words. But also for the chorus bit, it kind of changes key because in the verse, it sounds like it's in A major and you get kind of A and then D and then a major again, but with the C sharp in the bass back to a D. But in the chorus, you get E major and then B major. So let's have a go. There wasn't actually that much I had to do to that one, so let's hope the rest of them are like that. Okay, next up we get I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. So this song by the Rolling Stones has another classic riff that is a big feature of the song. And when I'm listening and trying to work out a song by ear, the important thing is to listen to the key features of it that make it 
that song. There are lots of songs that are just melody, chords, and rhythm, but when it has a key feature like this or a guitar riff, it's really important to try and include that and work that out very early on. And I also noticed that this song has quite a bouncy rhythm, so I'm trying to find a way of replicating that on the piano as well. The chords in this song were quite easy to work out, but they do have some interesting, more odd notes in them, particularly notes in the melody, which you wouldn't normally hear with those chords, so they're more tricky to work out. This one's interesting because it's in the key of E major, but in the chorus you get a G, which isn't normally in the key of A major, so you get this really weird jazzy chord. Anyway, here is I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Okay, next up we have Hey Jude by The Beatles. Hey Jude. An interesting thing about songs by The Beatles is that they tend to have longer phrases, so there's a lot more chords and melody to try and remember. They don't often have four chord sequences in their song. They're normally eight to 16 chord sequences. And those chords are quite simple, but it's often hard to remember what order they go in. And also because the chords are quite simple and in the song, the piano isn't doing an awful lot. I want to try and do more with it and do my own version of the song. There's a lot more melody to remember with this one, but obviously this is a song that I have heard before. So when I'm playing it, I can kind of guesstimate what the melody is going to be. So this is Hey Jude. Okay, next up we have Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Now, obviously, I have definitely played this before. You can't play the piano without playing Bohemian Rhapsody. But I don't know the vocal harmony part at the beginning, so I'll try and work that out, and then I'll put it together. Is this the re Is this just bad? With the opening to Bohemian Rhapsody, it has quite interesting chords, and that's because it's a four-part harmony, because there's four of them singing. Now, because I know the main piano part, I already know the key to this piece, which is B-flat major, and that does help. However, there are also a lot of chords that don't fit in that scale, and that's partly why the song is so great, but it does make it very difficult to remember the entire intro, because there's not very much repetition. Okay, that was actually quite challenging to work out because there's a lot of notes that are really close together. So it's quite difficult to hear. But this is Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay, next up we have Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. 
So obviously in Billie Jean, one of the key features is that bass line. So that is one of the first things that I've got to try and work out. The chords that go with that bass line are moving up and down by step. But because they're like short stabs, I'm more listening for the quality of sound of the chord. So what type of chord it is rather than trying to hear the individual notes that are in those chords. Also, given the time constraints, which basically gives me three minutes per song, it's super hard to try and do anything drastic and interesting with this song. Because although the left hand does fit very nicely in one hand, playing that constantly doesn't give me a lot of time to add things into the piano part. The difficulty with this one is the coordination between the left and right hand, but it is quite repetitive, so it's easy to remember. So this is Billie Jean. Definitely tough to get that right in such a short space of time. Okay, next up we have One by U2. Now, with this song, I didn't know it that well at all before listening to it for this video. I think I've vaguely heard it before, maybe many years ago, but it didn't sound overly familiar to me, so I was really having to listen to the melody to make sure that I could really do an accurate representation of the song on the piano. With songs that I've heard before, a lot of the time I don't even really need to listen to the song because I can use my memory of the song to work out the melody and the chords. But with situations like this, I am really relying on listening to the song and making sure I can pick that melody out. Okay, this one's pretty simple because it's in C major and it's pretty much the four chord pattern. So this is one by U2. Okay, next up is Imagine by John Lennon. Now, once again, obviously at some point I've played this, but for this one, I actually can't remember exactly what the notes are. Similar to Hey Jude, Imagine is also one of those songs that has longer phrases. The first part of the song only uses two chords, which is an F and a C chord. But when you get to the pre-chorus chorus sort of section, there are a lot more chords to remember and the melody is moving a lot more. But I suppose unlike One by U2, this is a song that I have heard before, so I can kind of work this out without having to listen to it too much. But I'm also keen, like Hey Jude, to make this more interesting and do some more interesting things on the piano with it. But there isn't an awful lot of time to do something unless I just do it on the spot and risk a terrible performance. Okay, here is Imagine.
is such a great and simple song. Okay, and number one, the number one most iconic song is apparently Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And who am I to argue? Although Smells Like Teen Spirit is a very different genre to God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols, because it has that rockier guitar part, I can hear once again that it's using power chords. So on the piano, I can play the chords using that shape and it will give that rockier sound to it. It's hard to replicate the distortion and things like that that you get on a guitar on the piano. And I think those effects do really add to the size, which means I'm going to have to rely on other ways to make the sound really big for the chorus. But I really don't have a lot of time left, so I'm probably not going to be able to make it as big as I would like. But I can make the verse a little bit softer to show at least a bit of contrast between the two sections. Okay, here is Smells Like Teen Spirit. That's the top 10 most iconic songs according to Free Your Music. If you think there should have been other songs in the top 10 of the most iconic songs, then let me know in the comments, because I'm sure there are many. And if you want to see me work out six iconic TV themes in just 30 minutes by ear, then check out this video, and I will see you there.